The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. I'm Kelvin Hepner, and on this episode of uh, the Canola School, we're going to look at how Canadian canola production, canola farmers in Canada rank or stack up versus canola producers, rapeseed producers in other parts of the world. And joining us to uh, to explain his research, we're pleased to have Jorg Zimmerman, Global Ag Advisors, an independent farm business advisor here in Manitoba, works with farmers in Western Canada and around the world. And Jorg, to, to start, can you fill us in on where you get this information from in terms of comparing canola production data and cost of production, profits, all these key benchmarks yeah. from around the world? Yeah. Hi, Kelvin. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm part of the AgriBenchmark Network, which is a, a global network of, uh, of farm business advisors like myself, scientists from universities, uh, other ag industry people. And uh, we collect uh, data on an annual basis in a, in a standardized way from the major crane and oil seeds growing uh, areas in, in the world. Uh, which you know it, it, it includes um, corn, soybeans, rapeseed, wheat, rice, and other other big commodities. So when we look at canola, you're comparing growing areas, obviously here in in North America, but also Europe, Ukraine, Australia would be some of the keys. Yes, and um, and we will have uh, some farms, typical farms coming online uh, from Kazakhstan and Russia, but that's uh, we talk about that a bit later. Okay. Yep. So let's start with yield then. How do our canola yields here in, in Canada? We've had some strong yields in, in recent years. How do they compare with canola yields in other parts of the world? Yeah, our our yields per, per hectare or per acre are obviously lower than the winter rapeseed uh, yields in, in Europe. Um, you know, the our our yields are around uh, two and a half tons per Per, he per hectare and in, in Europe there would, it would be around close to four tons but that's a total different animal winter rapeseed compared to our canola much longer growing season and so on so we are up in the, in the lower end of the spectrum uh, if it comes to to yields uh, we are not the lowest uh, the lowest are probably the Australians uh, the Australian uh, rapeseed uh, yield is highly dependent on uh, timely timely rains Okay, what about getting into cost of production and uh, and the math behind uh, what how profitable it is for farmers? So I mean, ob obviously it, it's very profit. It's comparably profitable to profitable to farmers to grow canola here in in Western Canada, as we as we all know, and that's why the the acres are going up, and we are I think we are seeing rec record acres of canola again this year. So uh, that the, the one reason for that is is because we are are basically leading together with the Ukrainian producers we are leading the the cost of uh, in the cost of production um, uh, a bit a, a bit of a comparison between the Canadian and the Ukrainian costs of production um, we are leaders in the operational costs meaning that we are using our equipment very efficiently and we are using our our labor very efficiently also the Ukrainians only have a, a three dollars uh, per per hour wage rate and we would probably have a 20 to 25 dollar hour per hour uh, wage uh, but I think that's mainly uh, related to uh, the corporate farming structure in in Ukraine and Russia uh, there's much more overheads. It's it's much more difficult to to manage these farms rather than uh, managing uh, family farms here in in uh, Canada. So, so breaking down the the cost of production a little bit further than York, where do we fit in terms of the the actual direct cost to producers, the the seed and the the input costs for growing crop? Yeah. So. We are surprisingly in a similar range than the German producers. Uh, the explanation is that the German producers have simply more more yield uh, to split up these uh, these direct costs to. Uh, and again, I'm talking about always talking about U.S. dollars per ton because that's in the end what we are what we are selling uh, all. And um, so the direct costs are the same as in in Germany, but they are. Uh, higher than in in the Ukraine, 
And I think one reason for this is the, the, seat, the seat costs here in Canada, the seat costs in Canada are comparably high. So what I did is I, I looked at the seat costs plus the, the herbicide costs because, you know, here in Canada with the GM trades, that's basically the trade-off. So the combination of the, bow, of the two, seed plus chemical, is, is basically the same uh, than in Germany and in, in, uh, in Canada. Um, but the relation between seed and, and, uh, and chemicals is, is different. So the seed chemical ra ratio in Canada would be about 3.5 to 1, whereas in, in Europe it would be closer to 1.1 to 1. So um, one thing we could really focus here and which farmers are already doing is saving, saving in seeds. And I mean, not, not, uh, you know, not compromising from an agronomic point of view, but you know, having more precise uh, seeders that, that can actually seed two and a half pounds per, per acre or even less. And in this way, there's a, there's a lot, a big low hang hanging fruit to, to, to uh, to take in, in terms of seed costs. Okay, shifting then from the, the cost side to the, the income side, w the amount that we get paid for canola here in, in Canada, how does that compare with other parts <coughs> of the world? I, I'm assuming our transportation factors uh, factors into this. Yeah, and we, 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 we think we see that in our data as well. Uh, the, the European producers get, uh, get higher on-farm prices, whereas we, tend to get a bit lower uh, on farm prices which I think is is mainly related to the to the uh, transport costs um, I think there's also a little bit of an effect from from GM canola I know in 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 Australia for example there is a, a, a truly uh, a difference between GM canola and non GM canola so I think there might be a little bit of, a, of an impact there as well. But I think the major part is transport costs. And um, yeah, so we, we get lower prices than the other, the rest of the world. Okay. What about other parts of Russia? Si Siberia, is that a place where we could expect to see increased rapeseed or oilseed production? Yeah. So, you know, if it comes to, <coughs> to wheat, for example, we always talk about, really talk about the Southern Russian regions and the European part of, of uh, of Russia, uh, but there is also uh, another part in in Russia, which is uh, the Western Siberia, the Western Siberian steppes, which is very comparable to our North American prairies. Um, <coughs> and you know the the areas in 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 Western Siberia are not being really being talked about yet. So far, they are heavily in. In, uh, in cereal production, but they are they are shifting towards other other crops as well. So, uh, Russia, uh, r the Western Siberian parts of, of Russia have has about 16 million acres of, of seeded land, and uh, Kazakhstan has another 17 million, so uh, roughly about 33 million uh, hectares, and uh, so that's basically another another uh, Western Canada in on the other side of the world, which, which could come online in terms of uh, other crops than, than wheat only. Uh, so I'm talking about higher quality wheat, I'm talking about uh, oil seeds, uh, flax and, and canola, talking about uh, lentils and other pulse crops, peas, uh, which, you know, from my point of view, if I looked at the climate of the two, of the two areas, the prairies and the steppes, very similar climates, very similar uh, precipitation, uh, very similar growing conditions. I have uh, worked there quite a quite a lot, and now I'm living here. So, you know, I see a lot of, of similarities between these two areas in the world, and and I think there is quite a potential uh, for these areas to to uh, to produce more more rapeseed and more and more pulses because it would, it would just help their, their crop rotation a lot. Now they have to, they have to overcome a few obstacles <coughs> uh, before they can do this. This would be, they have to have more working capital. They have to get a, you know, introduce uh, newer technologies in order to, to uh, go without, without fellow. They have to apply more, more fertilizer. Uh, and uh, then they, they would be able to grow canola quite, 
quite good as well, and also uh, lentils and linseeds and uh, and peas. Okay, what about back home for Canada's canola industry? What do you see as uh, maybe as a final question? Or where, what do you see as an opportunity to uh, or an opportunity to take advantage of, or or that needs to be uh, further explored, or or a direction to move in? So I think we should continue on on the you know on, on focusing on the low operating costs, like uh, you know, s operate as efficient as possible possible, and we are already good there, so we we shouldn't lose that edge. Uh, that's the first thing, and you know again, uh, if it comes to direct costs, uh, have a look where is the lowest hanging fruit, and in my point of view, that is so far uh, is the seed. Um, you know, there is an opportunity to, to save in, in costs, again, again, not agronomically, but, uh, you know, just more precise seeding and uh, having a better seed bed and so on and a better placement of seed. And I, I think there is a, a lot of opportunity there. Um, and, uh, you know, we can't really do a whole lot about our, our land costs. They're, they're what they are. They're, they are different in, 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 in Russia, but you know what, what I always keep saying to my, to my producers when they ask me, so you know, what do you see, what, what, what we can do is, uh, there's a big difference between the farm structure in, in um, Russia and in Kazakhstan to, to here. We are mainly here in Canada, we are family farm operations and and our, our strategic advantage, in my point of view, is that we have uh, um, very flexible management. So we can basically decide in the morning if we want to, <coughs> if we want to do that foliar application and we do it in the afternoon or in the evening. Um, but uh, the, the, the Russian and Ukrainian producers, the management is not so easy because they are, you know, they are structured in very, in very hierarchically. And if management wants to do something, it, it'll take quite a while to, to do it and to get all these the structures in place. So I think in my point of view, do everything that is, that is management intensive. And, you know, even if it's a little bit harder, but, you know, it's, don't don't go the easy way. Go the harder route and 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 figure out stuff. And I think that's what we can do. Management in the in the end is the, in my mind, the only long-term competitive advantage. You know, we will Russian producers can buy our air seeders. They can buy uh, chemicals. They can buy seeds. They can buy they can even buy management power. But it's uh, they're closer to China. They're too. closer to China too. So. We can focus in the long run. We need to focus on on superior management, and and I think that's what <coughs> where we are where we are at right now, and <coughs> where we are already good. But that's <coughs> our long term advantage. All right. Thanks for your time, Jorg. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kellen.